Captured by Curiosity rover, this view shows the path the rover took as it drove to the sulfate bearing unit, an area it investigated on Mount Sharp. Curiosity had to drive around a large sand patch in order to reach a place where it could ascend to the sulfate rich region. Looming at the top of the panorama is the upper part of Mount Sharp.
This unusual view of the horizon of Mars was captured by NASA's Odyssey Orbiter using its Themis camera in an operation that took engineers three months to plan. The image was taken from about 250 miles above the Martian surface, about the same altitude at which the International Space Station orbits Earth. The image is made by combining three channels of infrared data that highlight water ice clouds and dust in the atmosphere. The panorama was one of ten taken to capture a one-of-a-kind view of the Martian atmosphere as Odyssey circled the planet during its two-hour orbit. The reason why this view is so uncommon is because of the challenges involved in creating it. Engineers at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California, which leads the Odyssey mission, and Lockheed Martin Space, which built Odyssey and co-leads day-to-day operations, spent three months planning the observations. Due to Themis's sensitivity to warmth, it is able to map ice, rock, sand and dust along with temperature changes on the planet's surface. It can also measure how much water ice or dust is in the atmosphere but only in a narrow column directly below the spacecraft. That's because Themis is fixed in place on the orbiter, it usually points straight down. The mission scientists wanted a more expansive view of the atmosphere because seeing where those layers of water ice clouds and dust are in relation to each other, whether there is one layer or several stacked on top of each other helps them improve models of Mars's atmosphere. Because Themis can't pivot, adjusting the angle of the camera requires adjusting the position of the whole spacecraft. In this case, the team needed to rotate the orbiter almost 90 degrees while making sure the sun would still shine on the spacecraft's solar panels but not on sensitive equipment that could overheat. The easiest orientation turned out to be one where the orbiter's antenna pointed away from Earth. That meant the team was out of communication with Odyssey for several hours until the whole operation was completed. This panorama shows an area on Mars that was likely formed by large floods of water and debris that piled jumbles of rocks into mounds within a channel that created a long ridge downhill. On the right side of the scene, just across a lane of dark sand covering the near side of the channel, is one of several mounds found within the channel and on the left is a pile of rocks. The region, which is also rich in salty minerals called sulfates, is in the foothills of Mount Sharp, a three-mile tall mountain within Gale Crater. The shadow seen at the bottom right is that of Curiosity Rover's mast head.
This observation shows the edge of a dark dune field on the floor of a 93 miles diameter crater in the southern highlands of Mars. These dunes are most likely composed of basaltic sand that has collected on the bottom of the crater. Superimposed on their surface are smaller secondary dunes which are commonly seen on terrestrial dunes of this size. Near the crests of the dark dunes are bright patches of frost and dark spots within the frost patches are areas where defrosting is occurring. Many smaller and brighter bed forms, most likely smaller dunes or granule ripples, cover the substrate between the larger dark dunes as well as most of the floor of the crater. In many locations, Large boulders are seen on the same surfaces as the bright bed forms. The dark dunes stratigraphically overlie the small bright bed forms, indicating that the darker dunes formed more recently. However, in several areas, the dark dunes appear to influence the orientation of the small bright dunes, possibly by wind flowing around the larger dunes suggesting that both dark and bright bed forms are coeval. This panorama shows the rim of Endeavour crater which is 14 miles in diameter. The view extends from the east-southeast on the left to southward on the right. It surrounds the far rim of Endeavour crater on the left and the crater's western rim on the right. The small impact crater visible in the distance on the slopes of the far rim is about 740 feet in diameter and is 13 miles away. The high peak in the distance on the right was about 1.2 miles to the south of Opportunity Rover's position when this view was taken by the rover. The crater rim curves off to the left in a series of peaks towards the far southern rim. The floor of Endeavour crater is filled with dark sand, brighter dust and in the distance dusty haze. 
Also outcrops here on the western rim are crater ejecta covered in the foreground by dark sand ripples.